ebook, working on a book, working on an ebook. <laughs> what are you book? Are you working on a book? I have a book. I have a book. <laughs> okay, so, so there's a level of proactivity in that description. There's a uh, what I call this morning self direction or agency that's associated with your work now. How, uh, do you think I'm right in focusing on that? I'm willing to hear a counter. I, 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 you can push back on me, but do you think that this is an important aspect right now of, learn, of teaching people to be a learner, is to be self-directing? No. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I, don't. I just want to say, if you are self-motivated, that's half the battle. A lot of my students don't have the motivation uh, to, to do a project, but when, when given an opportunity to do something that they're passionate about or their self-interest, or uh, you're going to say, go ahead, write that and, um, and, and give it 30 days for NaNoWriteMo, which is National Novel Writing Month, a lot of my students are able to create 100 pages of an awesome story, and, and how did they do that? It's because they were self-motivated. I think that's a really important point, Joyce, because I think that once, if children are invested in an idea, I think they are more willing or more interested to pursue that idea. And I think also about what you were talking about earlier in terms of those reluctant learners. Um, we all have those, those learners in our classroom, and I think what the technology does is it gives them access. It gives them access to their ideas and the learning. And I think we really have to think deeply about that when we're working with students. Because it's through their ideas um, that we are also learning. And we were talking at lunch, I can't remember who it was, um, who was, maybe it was you Joyce, who was, who was sharing an idea um, that a student has and you are learning right along with your student. Like you don't know, or maybe it was you Alyssa, I think. And you don't know where that learning is going to go but you're kind of on this journey together with your students. And I think once we model that, then it's that it's through that modeling that they're seeing, oh, we don't really know where this is going. And so it's their ideas and your ideas. And then we're really modeling for them how they can be self-directed and think about what they feel is important and then pursue that idea. And I think more than ever, I mean, now's a time when without self-direction, that gap between well, the gap between those who are self-directed and motivated and those who aren't is, is huge. When I show my student, you know, I'll come across a video of, uh, I can't think of his name, but the 12-year-old, little Steve Jobs guy, I can't think of him. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when I show a video of him presenting and, and up there doing his thing and the apps that he's created, where he is and going to be in life because of that and where a kid who's not motivated and self-directed is going to be, is huge. So the competition, because of the access, the competition is going to be a lot more intense for the jobs that kids want. Um, and I know that a lot of our population, that access comes into play, what does that look like? But it's just, you know, you have to want it and you have to do it. And without that, you really don't have much of a chance, I don't believe, in the future. It used to be that everybody, you know, for the most part, everybody had you get through high school, you get through college, and there you get through high school and you decide what you want to do. But now, kids are knowing and, and experiencing and, and having success well before they get into a college. And if you're not motivated and self-directed, you're way behind the eight ball on that one. So I think that's the message that our kids need to have. And, and even as adults, that's our reality. So. Yeah, just to echo what Matt said about, you know, we often talk about the distribution of wealth in this country, and I think the distribution of use of information is equally uh, staggering. Uh, I had a student the other day that decided to post some of their work on Facebook and Pinterest because they want to improve their digital footprint. And I said, that kid's far ahead of a lot of other people, and she gets it. Um, and I think students that don't, um, they're going to be far, far behind um, if they don't figure that out. Um, I'm actually seeing more of that self-direction, especially in the South Burlington School District with the one-to-one -one initiative, and I don't know how many people are coming from districts that are either engaging with the one-to-one -one or looking at it, but it certainly has opened the playing field in terms of accessibility and equity for technology. I have students who 
um, don't have internet at home, don't have a computer, now all of a sudden they have a laptop, they come to school with their laptop, they're uploading images, they go home and they have Photoshop elements on their laptop, and they come into school the next day with these incredible creations. Um, and so I think that just in terms of the one-to-one -one initiative and even personal mobile devices, um, we're certainly seeing more self-drive. Um, I know South Carolina, we, we actually put Wi-Fi into our island's bus so students who don't have access to uh, the internet up in you know, Georgia or South here or further um, can actually access that Wi-Fi right in their, you know, on the hour-long bus ride. So, um, which is pretty incredible and I've seen, just as I mentioned before, I've seen students who were completely disengaged and not motivated now all of a sudden have a laptop and have a myriad of tools and opportunities and 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 is now now they're able to even seek out what they're passionate about.